sometimes babies are born and they tell them they have a hole in the heart and there are a couple, two types of holes. Can you talk about these holes? Well, generally speaking, holes inside the heart can be divided into two different categories. Holes in the wall between the bottom chambers of the heart, between the two pumping chambers of the heart. And in fact, these are the most common types of problems that we see in children that are born with a heart problem. And holes in the wall between the top chambers of the heart. Now, the holes in the wall between the bottom chambers of the heart are called ventricular septal defects. And the holes in the wall between the upper chambers of the heart are called atrial septal defects. Do we have to fix these holes, or do we watch them? What's our approach? Well, we generally feel that holes inside the heart um, are not a good thing for a patient who has an otherwise normal heart to live their entire life with. Um, holes in the wall between the bottom chambers of the heart, if they're large, can cause very significant health problems for children very, very early in life. These babies may not gain weight well, they may not feed well, they may develop pneumonia, they sometimes need to be placed on breathing machines. So holes in the wall between the bottom chambers of the heart, when they're large, can cause a child a very significant health problem. But the other thing we know about those holes is that some of them, even some of the large ones, will get smaller with time. So generally when a child is born with a hole in the wall between the bottom chambers of the heart, for a variety of different reasons, mostly because they, when children are born in the first week or 10 days of life, they still maintain the same type of circulation that they had when they were inside their mothers. Those children will not become sick usually with a ventricular septal defect until two or three or four weeks of age. From that time, we take our cue from the child. We always start with medications as a first line of treatment for these patients and we observe the ventricular septal defect to see if it's going to become smaller over the course of time. If it becomes smaller, then we watch a little bit longer. If, at any age, the hole doesn't seem to be getting smaller and the baby's suffering from the problem, and certainly by two or three months of age, we would go ahead and surgically close that hole. Holes in the wall between the upper chambers of the heart, although they do occur in several different types, have a very, very different natural history. Most of them are simply discovered because the child has a murmur. Most of these children grow and develop well. They haven't got any symptoms as a result of the hole in the wall between the top chambers of the heart. And in fact, it's usually quite a shock to the parents when a significant hole in the, uh, between the upper chambers of the heart is discovered. These holes need to be closed too for a variety of different reasons, but most importantly, because those children will not have a normal lifespan, generally, if they live their entire life with a hole in the wall between the top chambers of the heart. And in fact, even though they seem perfectly healthy, they will develop significant heart problems, usually in their second and third decades of life. So for those children, we want to get those holes closed too. We don't have to close them very early in life, usually after one year of age. Some of them can be closed in the catheterization laboratory with devices, and open heart surgery can be avoided for those children. Some of them, because of their size or because of their location, cannot be closed with devices and have to be closed with open heart surgery. Thank you very much.